once upon a time in a land not so far away. George was at his last rehearsal for his very first community play. In the play, George was a castle guard. He really wished he were a knight, like Steve and Betsy. Knights got to ride horses and had cool helmets. Plus, knights were really brave. But the man said, there are no small roles. There are only small monkey actors. So George kept practicing to make sure he said his line right. Sire, two riders approacheth. Guard! At last, George's big moment was here. It was just like in the play. But Charky did not halt. Charky kept right on going. Well, at least the castle's in one piece. Medieval castles had dragons. We have Charky. Well, we'd better get busy rebuilding the set and the props. We'll get the flag back. You guard the stage, George, in case Charky comes back. Uh -uh. George felt awful. It was his job to guard the castle. And he'd messed it up. What if Charky came back during the play tonight? He needed some way to keep Charky off the stage for good. <sighs> but it's hard to think if you've stayed awake all night practicing your one line, especially if your costume was hot and the stage lights were hotter. <sighs> what ho! <gasps> means, hey, what's up? Oh. <laughs> oh. A dragon is on the loose. <laughs> Don't want it getting into the castle again. <laughs> the dragon, it followed us to the castle. <laughs> Good guard George had to stop the dragon. It would prove his bravery, and the king might make him a knight. Ah! <laughs> Nothing is worse than dragon breath. Except maybe dragon slobber. My banquet! Stop it! Stop! Stop! Wizard, can you not stop the beast? Alas and alack, my magic hath met its match. The king would never make good guard George a knight now. How can we have our celebration with that beast destroying the castle? And then the little guard remembered. Dragons were sore afraid of bats. George loved to watch his friend Bill deliver papers. 
when it came to newspaper delivery. <gasps> Bullseye! Ooh. Bill never missed a target. And Bill never, ever missed a delivery day. 364 days of perfect delivery. You know what that means, George? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. If I deliver all my papers on time tomorrow, I'll win the golden pouch. Uh -huh. Yep, the golden pouch is only given to the best of the best, George. And I aim to be the bestest. One more perfect day, and that bag is mine. But the next day was not perfect. It was lousy. George wondered how Bill would ride his bike in all that snow. Not very well, it turned out. Believe this, George? Biggest day of my career, and I can't even get out of my driveway. Last time it snowed this bad, Pugnose O'Reilly crashed on the Lake Street curve, sprained his elbow, and had to retire. That's how I got his route! It's no use! So long, golden pouch. Ah, ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. <laughs> That's the spirit, George! Did Freckles McFadden? The all-time winningest golden pouch winner quit during the snowstorm of 79. Uh. No, he did not. If Freckles didn't quit, uh, neither will I. Now push me, city boy, push me! <laughs> Thanks, George! But the trouble with biking in the snow is... <laughs> If you manage to get going, you often can't stop. I can't even make my first delivery. How am I going to finish my whole route in time? Hey! If you're not delivering papers, want to pull me around in the snow? Bikes did not work well in snow. But that thing did. I've never used a toboggan before, but so far it's great. Hmm. Thanks for thinking of it, George. Ah. <laughs> of course, once we get to the flats, we'll have to pull it. But we'll make such good time on the way down, it won't matter. Uh -huh. Good morning. Thanks, boys. Hang on, gotta steer around this curve. <laughs> How do you steer? Hey, you boys all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know much about toboggans. I'm not much on snow sports. I guess I spend too much time playing with my trains. Ooh! Maybe there's something else you could use in here instead. <laughs> George! realized you can steer by leaning. <laughs> George, you're a genius. Why didn't I think to lean? That's how we can steer the toboggan. It had been a very sneezy winter. First, George had been sick, and now it was the man with the yellow hat's turn. George hoped his special cold-fighting little bit of everything soup would make him feel better. I'm 
sure it's delicious, George, but I can't taste anything. Ooh. George, I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> that spoon was just in my mouth. It probably has cold germs on it. See, germs are too tiny to see, but they're inside me. And cold germs are what made you sick when they got inside you. <laughs> yep, so be sure to wash your hands. George wished there was some way he could help the man get better. But all that cooking had made him one sleepy little monkey. George had just fallen asleep when he heard a strange sound. George remembered the last time he and Yoki had flown around in a spaceship. He had become very small and had flown all around his own body. Being small again might help George find those germs that were inside the man with the yellow hat. If George could kick them out, the man might get better. What a big mouth. George wanted to explore, but there was no time. He had germs to find. <laughs> they headed for the stomach. <laughs> but when they got into the man's stomach, they found out they weren't alone. George knew that germ. It was Toots. He and his friends had made George sick before. Now they were playing a concert in the man's stomach. Well, I'm a rambling germ, always out on the go. I'll bring you down and head up to another show. Well, I'm in lots of places, floating free as a wheeze. Riding on your silverware or flying on sneeze. Cause I'm a rambling germ. Well, I'm a rambling germ. I said a rambling germ. I'm coming to your town. I played at many people all across this great big land. Especially in the folks who don't wash their hands. Because soap makes me wiggle. And soap makes me sneer. Germans. One sign of soap and toots is out of here. Cause I'm a rambling germ. Welcome, germ, to the... <gasps> hey, you're no germ. You're that meddling monkey. <laughs> Quick, run for it. You'll never catch us this time. Never. <laughs> Watch out for the mucus. The germ could get stuck in that stuff. It was a beautiful day on Lake Wanasink Lake. Fishermen were fishing. Herpetologists were herpetologing. And monkeys were monkeying. It's a boomerang. You throw it and it comes back to you. Well, it's supposed to come back. Ball. 
No, it's an egg. Ah! Where'd it come from? A bird's nest, of course. Huh? Ah. Maybe it rolled here. Poor little fella. How do you know it's a boy egg? I think it's a girl egg. And I'm gonna name her Tiffany. Still, it's a bad spot for an egg. Eggs are great for some things. The shell lets in air and moisture and keeps out dirt. That's good. But because they're so thin, they let in cold and heat, too. That's bad. Oh. That's why birds sit on them. So the egg is always the right temperature. An egg without a nest might not hatch. George had to get the egg back to its nest before it was too late. Wait! Eggs can break like that. Plus, you shouldn't slosh them around. We have to find her mommy so she can come and sit on Tiffany. <laughs> Good idea. <gasps> My paper out. Oh, I'll come help as soon as I'm done. It's up to us, George. How about I stay here and protect Tiffany while you find the mommy? <gasps> I know. Ask Grandpa. He knows all about eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Found an egg, huh? <laughs> That's one big egg. Might be an eagle egg. Huh? That's the only bird around here with an egg that size. There's an eagle nesting in the pine grove down by the lake. That's... <gasps> we just want to have a picnic. Sorry. No trespassing past this. <laughs> Did you find the mommy, George? <laughs> well, hurry! The egg might get too hot. <gasps> you found an egg? Uh, can we see it? No, uh, shells are thin. You might wake Tiffany from a nap. Yeah. Want some watermelon? <laughs> Allie was right. It was getting hot. George had to hurry. Well, they've got to be here somewhere. They couldn't just walk away. Well, they could. I just hope they didn't because that would be a disaster. sure did have big nests and really big eggs to go in them. His egg wasn't nearly so big. How could Mr. Rankins ever have thought his egg was an eagle's egg? He'd drawn his egg way too big. The N Avenue Animal Shelter scavenger hunt is about to begin. Boys, I tell you, Team Piscetti is going to do very, very well today. Maybe we won't win, but we're going to raise a lot of money for a good cause. Who says we won't win? Ah. Well, we're pretty good, but we're never going to beat my cousin. You have a cousin, Chef Piscetti? Oh, that's right. Cousin Nilguini. He's the greatest, even when we were little. I thought I knew all about making the mud pies. Hey. <gasps> Until I saw Cousin Nilguinis. I'll never be as clever as he is. <gasps> there he is! Come on, come, come! <laughs> hey, Cousin Paschetti, nice to see you. You look great. How you doing? Well, uh, good. But I'm afraid we're going to lose to you. Come on, where's your confidence? And with a team like this, how can you not win? Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
scavengers. Are you ready? Here we go. See you at the end of the race, winner. <sighs> You're each being handed the list of shapes. Some are easy, some are hard and worth more points. Ah. Whoever has the most points at the end wins the golden rectangle. You have one hour. Ready? On your mark. Get set. Hunt! Oh, I'm too nervous. You read. <gasps> One hundred diamonds. Oh, better stick to easy ones up here. They're more our speed, and, and we can get more done in the hour. Ah. <laughs> four white rectangles. It's worth four points, but you have to have all four. <laughs> well, you heard. Follow him. <laughs> Maybe I am clever. Ah! Well, hi, George. Okay, now three stars. Let's go! Seven minutes left. What else, Marco? We can get eight points if we find a large octagon. Octagon, eh? Something with the eight sides. Hmm. <gasps> ah! Stop signs were octagons. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight! Octagon! Eight more points! Good work, Giorgio! <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> What's left? Twelve egg shaped things. Oh my. Oh, what is shaped like an egg? <gasps> Biscuiti nose! <laughs> Perfectly egg-shaped. <laughs> How is it going? Thirty-six points. Now, Nettie, I don't want to jinx her, but I think maybe we're gonna win this one. Then I'll cook your pizza so you can celebrate. Twelve points for a blue ring. Let's go. <laughs> 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 